Hello again. Yes, today's topic is how you can heal from anything, whether it's emotional, physical, mental, or otherwise. Um, I actually wanted to come on here today and answer a lot of questions that you all have in, in regard to this topic. And thank you, by the way, for sharing your questions with me because that's when I can see really where you may need more clarity or um, more refinement or better understanding of these things that I'm sharing with you. And by the way, just so you know, anything that goes out, any messages that I am sharing with you, any tools or techniques that I'm sharing with you are all meant for you to become more empowered, more confident, more resilient, and more self-assured. So today, as I said, we're gonna talk about how you can heal from anything. And this is not an exaggeration. Even though I know it may seem impossible, it may seem, uh, you know, completely crazy out there. Look, if you would have asked me, if you would have told me this even eight years ago, I would have not believed this because it's not something that I surrounded myself with. I didn't have the knowledge. I didn't have the information. I didn't have the insight. And today, though, I can tell you with conviction, because I'm one of those people, I need evidence in my own life for me to see that this is true. There's a lot of books out there, there's a lot of information out there, and unless I can see it with my own eyes, unless I have experienced it, and I am, unless I have my own evidence, I am very, very, I'm not quick to talk about this, but this is something, healing is something I have witnessed with my clients, with my students, and the possibilities. So, first of all, if you have considered and used Western medicine and it has helped you, that's great, right? That's clearly the point. The reason we go to doctors is because we want healing, we want health, we want to be cured, we want help. And a lot of times Western medicine is enough and it is incredibly powerful, so that's great. However, a lot of people that I have worked with that have reached out to me are felt stuck. They felt like Western medicine was only able to get them this far, but they really weren't, they didn't feel like they were cured or truly healed. That's where the power of your mind can be incredibly helpful, not just helpful, but your mind holds the cure and the answer on how, and again, I know this sounds like this, this huge promise, and it is a promise because, again, it's going to be a little out there if you're not aware of the, this information. The truth is every single person, we all create our own life, our own future, our own present moment. We create our life. And therefore, we create every experience that is in our life, including the diseases that we have. Now, hold on. I know, I know you might say, Susan, I don't want to create disease. I don't want to create sickness. I don't want to create unwellness. Nobody does. And yet, subconsciously, we do. And this is the key word here, subconsciously. Now, if we were to generalize this, in a nutshell, what I have discovered, this eases sickness, disorders, are created by one thing, and one thing only. It always goes back to the root cause, which is always a significant emotional event that caused this. And I'm talking about anything, whether it's cancer, tumor, insomnia, irritable bowel syndrome, anxiety, um, chronic physical pain, anything. Anything is created by this one thing. And unless you are healthy, wealthy, and happy, you're not well. Because we are supposed to be not only striving to be healthy, wealthy, and happy, but that that is, for us human beings, how we're supposed to be. And anything that isn't in alignment with that 
is basically illness and dis-ease. And therefore, we are, we are worthy, absolutely worthy to have health, wealth, abundance, happiness in our life. Now, uh, to go a little bit further here, the reason why this approach, call it Eastern approach, call it unconventional, whatever you want to call it, it really doesn't matter. But the way I have been able to, and again, I don't mean to say I have been, you have the power, everybody has the power. It's just, it simply means I have the tools, I have learned how to apply this knowledge to help people in my life. The reason this works is because, as I said, you're the creator, we are the creator. So in order for us to understand how this was created and to get to the root cause, we must communicate with the part of you that has the understanding how this was created. And that part of you is your subconscious and your superconscious mind. Now, I've done tons of videos about the difference between the conscious, the superconscious, and the subconscious, but in a nutshell, I define the superconscious as your soul, as your higher self, as the part of you that knows what your purpose is, that knows what your direction is in your life, that knows who you authentically are, who you truly are, and who you're supposed to be. And again, it, it has knowledge of, of everything of who you are and, and what your purpose in this lifetime is. And we get to communicate with that part of you. The subconscious is the part of your mind that holds all your memories, all those beliefs that you have about yourself, all the emotions, your imagination, your subconscious mind is, is 95% of your mind power. Your conscious mind is only 5% of your mind power. And we as humans on a day-to-day -day basis, we typically use our conscious mind, give or take. However, when we can communicate with your subconscious mind, we get to ask questions like, how was this dis-ease created? Why was it created? What do I need to know about this? Can I heal from this instantaneously? Sometimes the answer is yes. And believe it or not, sometimes the person who actually walked in with a condition, and when I say walked in, this can be done over Zoom, walks out healthy and healed. That is possible. I'm not saying for everybody and for and for and, and all the time, and it is not up to me. That's also really important to distinguish here. When it is not instantaneously available, what I have learned is a couple of things. One could be that there is more learning that needs to be uh, understood about this certain condition. In other words, maybe there was a trauma in your childhood. Maybe there's something that happened that caused, and by the way, with anxiety, and this is a totally generalized statement that I feel like I can make because I have seen this with every single person. Every single person who has ever had anxiety and wanted healing, there was always, 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 always trauma at the root cause. Something happened where the person felt unsafe, where they felt unprotected, they felt incredibly scared, almost terrorized, and they felt um, like they couldn't depend on the people around them, which many times was adults. And the anxiety carried through, and to this day, they're living with a terror, with literally a tremor and a terror inside of them, and that is what causing the anxiety causes the anxiety. So the biggest thing with anxiety is we have to let go of the fear. And the person has to learn how to let go of this fear that is still attached to a person. So I hope I'm not going way out there. But um, but of course, oh, here's another thing I want to share with you if you want, if you're interested and curious about learning a little bit more. It's a tiny book, Soul Speak by Julia Cannon. She talks about the science, the metaphysics, and also at the end of the book, you will find examples, many, many, many different examples of if you have a migraine headache, if there is a tumor, if there is cancer, if there is um, any other kind of ailment, she has um, 
ideas and thoughts on what that root cause might be, what you might have to work through. So instantaneous healing may not be available right now, right away, because you may be holding on to resentment. You may be holding on to rage. You may be hold, and this is hard for so many people to hear and believe, but you might be stuck in a victim mindset mentality. And the truth is when we feel like a victim, we are very disempowered. Also, when we feel like a victim, subconsciously, what we actually did, maybe yesterday, maybe years ago, maybe a long time ago, we gave our power to somebody. I am this way because. I am that way because. So we are literally giving our power and saying, because of this, I am that way instead of being willing to take responsibility and say yes this happened it caused me to feel this way and to think this way and to believe this way but now that i understand i'm actually not a victim i get to change my mind about this and by the way the changing of the mind is what promotes the healing the changing of the mind is where the seed gets planted so that the person begin begins to heal. So the changing of the mind many times is the prompt to healing. Does that make sense? And that's where sometimes the healing journey can take a little bit longer. It could take a couple of days, it could take a couple of weeks, and it can take a couple of months. But isn't it still worth it, especially if Western medicine wasn't able to help us yet? You know, and again, a really good example of Western medicine and how Western medicine some, sometimes works compared to what I'm describing here. You see, especially with anxiety and depression, Western medicine prescribes therapy for years and meds. But let's think about this logically from a common sense perspective. Are meds really going to help you? heal or are they really just covering up the symptom in other words they're more like a band-aid because anxiety is all about fear fear of the future you know not being able to trust not being able to have faith about the future just like what happened at this at this original incident where you felt like oh my god i am helpless i'm hopeless nobody can help me i am terrorized i am scared i am scared to, to my wits end and nobody's here to help me and again that fear became such a trigger and such a cause of the anxiety and again, because we're so unconscious of this, we carry this forward, which is exactly what happened to me. This is why I have suffered with anxiety for 30 years plus years. And yes, they wanted to put me on meds. And yes, I went to therapy for years, but nothing really helped until I understood and I made that connection on how it actually works. And when you are free of anxiety, you have confidence in yourself again. You have confidence about your future. You have faith in yourself. You have faith in your abilities. You no longer care about what other people think of you and you begin to live in your authenticity. Here is the other huge part that I have seen where instantaneous healing may not be available right now, although it is available, especially when we are willing to change. And we, when we can see the big picture that the superconscious mind will show us, and this is a big one for so many people, not easy to change from this, but so worth it. And it is simply when a person lives a life that is inauthentic to who they really are. In other words, if you are doing anything in your life that is not in alignment with your heart and soul but really for us humans knowing what is in alignment with our heart it's so easy to see if you're in a relationship that there is no love or the relationship is empty or you're just staying because of the money or you're just staying because it's convenient if you have a job that you hate and you're only going there because oh the benefits are good oh you know it's walking distance from my home oh the hours aren't bad 
but every day you go there and you give all of you only to get back nothing right and this is just these are just small examples or even when it comes to our health if we expect to be healthy but we never invest anything into ourselves common sense common sense fresh air you know fruits and vegetables good sleep i mean common sense come on people right i mean how much do we really need to to sustain our health it doesn't it doesn't require require brain surgery and there's a billion dollar industry diet industry like the word diet pains me nobody needs to be on a diet but a lot of our weight issues once again aren't really physical they are mental and emotional something happened that caused extra weight gain again just an, another example if there is a lot of belly fat if there is bloat around your your tummy area basically again this is a generalized statement but chances are there's a lot of guilt and shame there most often there's also a lot of self-judgment and self-bullying present and especially when we live a life not fully in our authenticity in other words who you really are and to have the courage to stand behind yourself and to speak up for yourself and to speak your truth and to do the things that you love and to live a life fulfilled it does take a lot of courage and when we don't do that this ease will manifest because we may be able to fool the world, but you cannot fool your own body. Your own body will always give you signals and symbols to show you, hey, you're not 100% healthy. Hey, there is some work that needs to be done. Hey, pay attention to this. And again, it, it manifests in different ways and in different people. You know, not being able to sleep at night, um, uh, chronic knee pain I mean you name it uh, hernia hernia is another great example if you have experienced a hernia general statement again okay that usually means that you do not feel safe expressing your emotions that's when a hernia will develop and a lot of times the person look I'm not saying this with blame and judgment a lot of times because we have been so programmed and conditioned from the outside world whether it's society whether it's our parents whether it's our educational system we have been so programmed with who we should be and what we should believe and what we should be doing that we have lost touch with what do I want what do I believe who am I really you know, I've worked with so many, this, another great example of this, I've worked with so many gay people. Again, why do we even need to label them? But because in this society and this world we do, you know, and these same gay people, you know, lived a life with shame and guilt and, and worry and fear on what might happen if they come out. And we have a choice. We can either come out, and I'm just using gay as a, as a metaphor, because we all may have things that maybe we're ashamed about ourselves, or oh, what if the what if people around me find out, or oh, what if they know who I really am, and what you know, and and living with that shame and with that blame and that self judgment and that criticism and 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 this pettiness. Really, it will it will cause a life of so much suppression but there is a price to pay and the price to pay for that suppression is dis-ease period and the minute you begin to take time and pay attention to yourself truly give yourself attention the way never anybody has ever paid attention to you with unconditional love with awareness with with curiosity and say you know what let's take a look who are you what do you want what would make you happy in this lifetime what is it how do you want to live where do you want to live what's important to you 
you know, on the flip side, I've worked with so many professionals who are embarrassed to admit that they want to be wealthy. It's our birthright to be wealthy. Why, why, do, why do we need to be ashamed of that? Would you be ashamed to say, well, yeah, I don't need a lot of health. I just need to be a little healthy. It's okay if I have a tumor here and a little bit of cancer there. It's, it, I, I can live with that. I don't need much. No, nobody would ever say that. But when it comes to wealth, all of a sudden, everybody gets all, all embarrassed and ashamed and, oh, I don't want my neighbors to see and, oh, what are people going to think? Oh, I don't want to be, you know, seem like I'm boasting. You don't need to be boasting. But, you know, let's really think about all the things that we have been told and taught, the programming, the brainwashing, the hypnosis that we have experienced as children. And then of course we carry that into our adulthood. And now we're supposed to be the leaders, the role models. We're supposed to be, you know, the way show us to our children. But so much, so many of us still carry that, that BS program that has been downloaded into us. And some of that may be amazingly useful to you. Some of that you might be, hey, I believe exactly what my parents do believe and it's in my heart and I love it and I'm living an amazing life. That's great. And yet for many people, that is not the case. They are living a life to please others. You know, to, to sacrifice, that's another word, sacrifice. I've sacrificed so much for my family. Who says you need to sacrifice anything? Life is not about sacrifice. Life is about abundance and experiencing and enjoying. Yes, the ups and the downs. Because we all have come here to agree that we are, as human beings, we get to experience a roller coaster of emotions, a roller coaster of mental uh, challenges, a roller coaster of physical abilities. And when we can see that, we get to live every day in gratitude and curiosity and say, my gosh, I can't wait to see what's today, what, what's, on, what's, on, what's on the agenda today. You know, and, and live with faith and live with, you know, welcoming whatever comes into our life. And the truth is right now, I had no clue what was coming to me. Right now, what, what, is, what hit me with a ton of bricks is suddenly my mother-in-law, who's 93, by the way, um, had a fall a couple of months ago, long story short. The whole family manned up and now we all agreed that we are going to you know help out as much as we can needless to say everybody's schedule is completely uh, disrupted and and interrupted and 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 the most the best attitude throughout any of this is to remain flexible say okay my routine is disrupted okay things are different now my life is going to be different i will figure it out I will make it work and I will do this with gratitude and I will do this with I'm just so grateful that I get to help another human being that needs a little bit more help right now and that to me is a privilege it's not an inconvenience it's not oh my god it's such a disaster or what I'm going to do with my schedule I need to see all these clients you know no we get to our attitude defines so much of what we experience so let's recap this you can heal anything you want. It's just a matter of how committed are you? How willing are you to see the truth? How willing are you to work with your conscious, subconscious, and superconscious mind? Tap into that. And again, at the end of that journey, what you really get is a roadmap. Your superconscious and subconscious mind have the answers to help you understand why this condition was created, how it was created, what you need to understand about it, what you need to learn about it, what you need to release from it, and going into the future, how you might need to live your life a little differently now. And again, I'm going to share this last thing with you as well. I have also had plenty of sessions where at the end of the session, the person was really upset, really mad, angry, because they simply are not willing to change. And that's okay. That's okay. Because it's not up to me. And sometimes we're just not ready yet. We're just not ready yet. And 
you know, as a practitioner, I always tell my clients, as I said in the beginning of the session, you may not always get what you want, but you will definitely get what you need. And when you are ready to put this into practice, you will know. For some people, it's a lot to take, it's a lot to handle. It, it may seem overwhelming and that's okay too. You know, the worst thing you wanna do is judge yourself for it or blame yourself or feel like, oh my God, you know, this is embarrassing. I'm... No, just sometimes it's just useful to have the information and say, okay, let me spend some time and see if I'm open to this, if I am willing to go a little bit deeper here because a lot of this healing work isn't always pleasant. It's not always comfortable, you know, and you are the only person who gets to decide if this is something you want to um, take on, you know, and yeah, I'm trying to think if there is anything else that I want to share with you in this, you know, again, for me, this is such common sense knowledge because I've, I've done this so many times that, um, you know, to me, it's, it's, I do this every day all the time. And I, I wonder what questions you might have about this or what doesn't seem clear to you. Um, again, I have been hit with so many private messages and I welcome them all. If I can answer them, I certainly will. You know, if I can help you with your healing journey, I certainly would love to. If um, you have any specific questions about any diseases, again, this book, um, by Julia Cannon at the end, kidney disorders, knee problems, laryngitis, legs, leg problems, leukemia. Uh, there are all these different ailments, depending on where in the body, there's a different message that is linked to it. And it really is up to us to be open to this information and to work through this information. And however, the benefit and the reward is incredible, incredible, you know, because so many people, um, especially in that first session would be like, oh my God, I didn't know what I didn't know. I am so grateful that I now have all this insight, all this information. I now have the healing. I now can see the other person's perspective. I now can see what the other person actually meant. A lot of this is about forgiveness work too you know, and really seeing people for who they are, because resentment, rage and anger and, and fear, really those four things are what hold people back because these negative emotions, they get stuck in our bodies, they get bottled up, they lead to a lot of toxicity and that toxicity has to go somewhere. And it usually goes to our organs, to our joints, to our blood, uh, to our heart. And that's where we can then see the physical evidence of that long suppressed mental, emotional thinking and feeling. So I hope this helped. And again, I know this is far, far from the whole Western approach. And this is exactly why these modalities are available. And they have been for many, many years. And if you want to do even more research, you want to see many more stories, you want to have more evidence, I would say start with Dolores Cannon. She was my teacher. She wrote tons and tons of books on how she, in her hypnotherapy sessions, was able to you know, help people. And many times, look, again, Dolores Cannon really mostly wrote about her success stories. All those people that, you know, she was able to help heal. And by the way, none of us do the, you do your own healing. So to be really clear, Dolores Cannon is a healing practitioner just as I am, but you do your healing. I want to be very, very clear. You have the power to heal. You do your own healing. I just help you tap into that part of you that uh, we need to communicate with so that you can you can gain the answers. And um, I'm, however, I don't want to just share success stories with you. I want to share things that you know, from my own experience, this is what worked, this is what didn't work, this is what you can expect, this is what you shouldn't expect. I want to give you everything so that, you know, when, you know, God forbid, if you do want to work with me, you already have a lot of information and don't expect 
just miracles. Yes, they are available and they are possible, but it, it, I have not seen this with everybody. Okay, so I want to be super clear. Uh, thanks again for being here and um, I'm always available for you. Sending you much love today.